As I said, this is Rory Kildoff here in Main Street. He's a saddler by name. We call him, he's in business here in Banlaslow so a long, long time, I'll be long from. We'll go over and have a word with him now about his route. All right, reserves. Yeah, well, uh, does that include Jamie Jenkins here? No, there's a whole, I cannot. It's one thing, preaching or not. Preaching? <laughs> well, as I was uh, explaining uh, in my introduction across the road here a moment ago, it was about uh, Rory Clough. He's a, a saddler, really, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rory. That's right. Um, I was just saying that you're unique in the fact that there's not many of you left nowadays. Are, are there any left in this country at all? There are things of the past. I'm on like, your, your left. There's a boat, uh, we'll say you now, that does, how are you, Carmen? That does all the work, like we said, trap harness and that sort of thing. There's only about three in the whole country. Three. That's all. But then there's a lot of fellas who make the bridles and saddles and that. You know, there's a good few that are prone to Cora. But do we say to be able to make a uh, sure. For a trap harness or thing, that would be able to wear this there. Did you ring home down at Christmas at uh, the fair for the mantle for the set of harness donkeys? Didn't he ring uh, the other night? He did, and he had uh, to come one of those days. No, I don't want that to be some excuse. So, so there you are now. That's the way it. As I said, there you are now. Rory is uh, doing up. Is it a bridge or is it a. For uh, one of the local horses, not many horses left around this part of the country. Where is that for a change? Well, what's me for a fella? Oh, and, he's, you know, this, this, and he's down, he was down to, and he's a brother now, he said, in the Port Hugel, and he's in every second day, and he's in the road. So I better finish it all. Did your man come for the, for the bridle, the one you were doing the last day, the head car, the, the horse? Oh, he did, and I have another. The winkers. Oh, the big winkers. Ah. He did, and I have another, and he got another for another one. And I've admitted I'm selling the lads up in the shop the other day. I can't. 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 I can not i can not i that's um, a horse's again, winkers. Yeah, a horse's winkers. I have it bow now, you have? Yes, yeah. And that's one that I want to bring him to a show with no eyes. See? That's the difference. And they're both for the same man. But this is when he's working them under the cart, and this will be when he wants to bring him to a show. Oh, yes. the there. Yes, so yes. now, sir, that's a... all we can tell you about it. Yes. Well, uh, have you anything to say, Rory, you know, maybe about, uh, say, uh, Nolan Diaz and how long you're in business, or just to, just, just to run round uh, how long you're, this business is going here in Banlasaw now, for instance? It, this house uh, goes back over almost 200 years in the Indeed. same business, not in my family. And thanks for God, I wasn't here 200 years ago, but God, I, you wouldn't be taking me photograph <laughs> how I was. <laughs> uh, and and uh, father came in here in 1889. No, that's what he came. Time ago, huh? A fair while ago, all right. And I took over in 1951. 1941, sorry. 52 years ago. Father got a heart attack, and I took over. And he died two years after. So I owned it for over 50 years. Well, now, you must be one of the longest um, in business in Banlis Law now. Well, I must be. Paul Dooley was talking about there today. He says he's... Well, yeah. Paul Dooley said be there, uh, there, there, there a very long time in Banlaslow, all right. And I uh, was talking to Peter Cummins. Aye. Peter says he's in Banlaslow now for 58 years. I said, must be. I said, you're a Watford man, so... He said he's a Galway man now. Well, Paul said you're only kind of a Galway man, man you know? that's all. He's, he's, he's practically <laughs> blowing all the time. <laughs> well, so, well, some time ago, I had a lady in looking up her roots in Ireland, Aye. and she came in to me. She wanted to know who bought, who had the premises before why we had it. Mm. And I said, I just couldn't think of the name. She said, it would be Simmons. I said, that's right. right. And she says, my mother sold the premises to my father in 1912. 1912? Exactly. 1912. That's a long way. For 120 pounds, I said. Good God. Mm. Well, 81, 81 years ago. But there's some changes since that, isn't there? A lot of water, a lot of water is right. 
No. This house here is known as a, as a great spot for a stopover for lads coming in for a chat, you know. Oh, that's and true. Rory, he, he seldom, uh, as you can see, shame you sitting on the <laughs> TV show. Ah, he he has taken the taken out, he's right. Shame me, she can tell local uh, local man from the Square Republic in there has a, has a chair taken over for now. For, a, for this a half hour. So uh, whoever will come along, if we'll the get next... Some, we'll get some other one after that then. If the oh, next lad comes, he might have to sit on the... And the ground. And a old box or something. Always pick some up anyway, wouldn't let him out. Yeah, Rory, Rory has seen some great characters here in his day, like Mickey Kelly from Pulvay and oh, God, there all the great characters coming there, in. There, there were some right ones. John Powell, uh, all the men going back uh, along the line. Coffee Bradley. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coffee Bradley, God, I need. And Jake Ward. Oh. <laughs> oh, there was a lot of... Haley. Oh. <laughs> Birdie Kelly. <laughs> there was a lot of characters all right in the town. And it started back in 1833. The gentleman of Kilkenny came up to Bandlesloe to play the gentleman of Bandlesloe in a game of cricket. And the Kilkenny fellas bet the devil out of them. But that night they were celebrating below where Colbert's the sisters, now Davison's rather. And uh, some of the rest of the guests kicked up their knives they were making. And there was an old fella in it by the name of Tracy, an old butler barman and he was, uh, but he had a beard and he was drinking whiskey that night and so the whiskey that time was on, first shot, there was no water through it at all and uh, he stuck his, 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 head, his head in through the hatch to tell them to be quiet and fell up with a candle under his beard and they burned him to death with long culverts in 1833. My God, now, nice, isn't nice. That oh, was that's... the year and it, it, there's a record of it in the annals of the cricket match in England in, the, in their, uh, in Lords where they have all the cricket history for both England and Ireland. Okay. Not of the burning of the lad, but of the match. Yes, no. yes, yes. So that's all now. But that happened a good while ago. So the world is bad. That time is killing is there now. And I'll talk up to your Rory now. That's there you? since 1851. It's 142 years there. My God, it's still going as well. And it's it? taken over as same as the day. The day it was in, put, put in there, right? No. And if I get another 140 years of I want to give to the Vincent of Paul to raffle it for the poor of the town. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That'll be one we want to spend, all right. And that'll be, yeah? Uh, and that'll be, yeah. So that'll be it. Now, sir. I wonder what's it worth a chap like that now for the dealers. Now, you wouldn't know what you get for it. I'll depend on what the fellas want to do. Yeah, what you want to do. That's it, no. So that's all I can tell you now. I'm just having a look around here at Rory's all his trappings and customers waiting on all these various things. Where do they come from now, Rory? Where's the fortress of field you get, fellas, at the Well, they come from Dragon Islands, and I have, I have a set of harness up there from a fellow from the very top of the Nigal. My God. No, 170 miles he came. God, it's oh. a long way to come for a... What isn't it? Get his harness put there, run up there for a mod. So now. So that's all I can tell you now, Mr. Sir. Yeah. Mm. They don't have film on you here during the fair. Did it? Uh, French yeah, crowd. French crowd and a film on it. Because you, you'll be very famous now, Rory. Mm. Won't I? But if uh, if this comes out, we might give a we might give a copy of it to the BBC. Who knows? Oh, do. If we're. Uh, I'll we're... tell them to send this in on the royalties to me. Well, you know it's true because uh, I had a lot of films. I had a lot of films this year for the fair from England. And they, they said they saw on the television roll, the video of that one. They did, aye. That's right. There's a video going round, uh, I saw it in Canada myself one time. Thank you. Yeah, there was a fella telling me that uh, the Vannes Law Fair was on. It was aye. about six, seven years ago on a holiday there. And uh, they got, it was shown a few times in Canadian television. So it's probably does the round, you know. Aye. Of the famous, one of the most famous horse fairs in oh, uh, Europe, know. they call it. But, oh, um, I met a few, I met a friend in town this morning, and he's working in town. And he hasn't been here for the fair before. He said he couldn't believe what he saw, the people, all the people. Aye. Oh, so there's thunder there. Some he said, you know, they don't make enough of it. No. It's fantastic. Talk about the roads of Tralee. Aye, aye. And he said, any town there, only give anything to have over here. No, aye, aye. And there's people in town running around. I'm sure they are, there's a small boat and all like that. Oh, I don't know why they're in town. Oh, it is a great occasion to repeat it. Look at all the people come back to the holidays. Oh, I should have thrown one. Come from my offer. So that's it now. Last one Sunday, there was a big crowd in the church and he was ushered out at the front seat. And he was sitting in the front seat on his own. <laughs> and uh, the priest gave the sermon. And the sermon was so long, your man fell asleep. So he said to himself, How am I going to wake him for the rest of the Mass? 
So we got an idea. We looked down at your man and he shouted down, God grant him peace. The man still didn't wake him. So he went up to the loudspeaker and he shouted him to the loudspeaker on top of his face, God grant him peace. Your man jumped up and shook himself. Jesus, he said, what did he say about the grant? Aye, <laughs> <laughs> aye, that, that'll bring up the trouble, all right. Very fast. <laughs> Oh, very good, Rory. Well, well, have you run it now? Go on, off you go. Well, there was a farmer brought in a horse one day, he was a very good horse from Tyrus Moor, but he wasn't too well up himself, and he was asking £600 from me, and above the top of the square, that time when the fair was on the street. And, and uh, right said the buyer, I'll give the 600 he says, less 7.5%. Well, I'll think about it, sir. He didn't know the name of God, but 7.5%, because he was blind. So he went down to Maggie Mia's and the pub beside it and was going to come bear me and he went in and he says, Excuse me, miss, if he give you six hundred pound less seven and a half percent, what will you take off? Every bloody stitch. <laughs> she says. So he was as why he's going out as he was coming in. Ah, no. so, oh dear God, very good man, Rory. Well, we, we, uh, we, we, we might give him the one about Greek Ennis today, he was out in the forest, first office here, bringing the he used to be known the the forest to the first office. And uh, he had a new horse, horse and carriage, you see, and yes. a new horse. And the postman said to him, we got to make that's a lovely horse you have. Oh, a nice horse. When did you buy him? Oh, I bought him there last. So he examined the horse, and we got to find out the horse had only one eye. Uh -huh. Should you said, make the horse with only one eye. Sure, yes, I know that. He said, sure, I didn't get him to read the mail. Some of the pieces I want to know. Uh, oh, very good, uh, very good, Jimmy. Uh, well, that's uh, for people looking at this now. That's a, uh, yeah. an, um, an example of the kind of stories to be yeah, told in here. Yeah, right, yeah. This is the kind of the going rate every day. Ah, so yeah. the boys are just giving you a little mm -hmm. small taste. You want to have a camera running here and stop to, to keep Rory in, in but, touch. Uh, there was um, an old, uh, well, he was an old one, I knew him, but he joined the British Army in the 1418 war, an old colour maker here. Well, he was young at that time and he went off anyway. And he was stationed in Palestine. And yeah, the Palestinians weren't too keen on the British that cut your throat and out of the tide, it'll be nearly a fellow behind the door. Yeah. But anyway, my man wrote home to his mother and he says, Dear mother, he says, I'm in the land where Christ was born. <laughs> and I wish to Christ I was the land where I was born. I was glad to get home again. <laughs> 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 that's a good one. That's a good one for the vices out here. <laughs> now, so that's that it. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's your God and my I wish to God back in the land where I was born. <laughs> Mm -hmm. no. that's so, so, so that's all now we can tell you for, at the moment. Are you sure you have another one? This farmer came in and it was on the Monday morning and I was tidying up the shelves and a farmer came in and he stood there. And the other farmer came in and he stood Aye. down there. But eventually I got to throw them together. So when I got to throw them together, I could do my jobs and the boys had a great chat. Mm -hmm. Well, they talked about everything but sickness. Sickness never gets out of the safe. I'm going to get a cigarette. I'll be back and pick one while I'm going down for a cigarette. But sickness never came into the conversation whatsoever. So after a while there was a bit of a lull in the conversation and the two boys ran out of something to say and I stood up to get the conversation going again. And all of a sudden one lad put his hand there and he said, and he said to the other fella, you know, I'm making for me. I'm minute. making for me arthritis. Jesus, is that right? said the other fella, I'm Kelly from Caliber. He thought he was telling them who he was and where he was from. There she had me telling a story, and Rory has just gone off for a cigarette. He says he can't tell stories that don't affect his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's his inspiration. We were watching a film there. We were filming a bit up in St. Quillen's Terrace the other day, and we met an old fellow there, Mikey Murphy, oh, who, who was in the Spanish Civil War uh, 65 years ago. And Mikey couldn't talk either unless he had a woodbine in his that's right, that's right. So Rory's body in the one boat, as the fellow says. He's in his lorry now. He, uh, the Irish fellas, they joined the British Army in 1940. Things weren't going so well at home, so they went out and joined the British Army. So they were anyway, they were out in North Africa, and they were dug in in the sand, and they are rattling away at a bloody machine gun, and shells going over their bloody head, and they were in a fierce day yet. And this fellow said, did you hear anything from home lately? They started chatting. And he said, yes, we had a letter, he says, and Dave is after getting in again. He, he's in, his government is after getting in again. Ah, oh, that's great, said the other fella. That he's a great man. He kept us out of this bloody war anyway. <laughs> that's the Lord God Almighty tonight. You have to get in any good. Your man was, uh, uh, didn't uh, understand the crack like, you know what I mean? Hutch. What do you mean he, getting in, he got in again? I wasn't listening to you funny there, Rory. 
Did you see Dave got in to the, and he says, oh, it's a great he got in because he's a great man. He kept us out of this bloody huh? war anyway. <laughs> and they told him and the shells when they fell over their head. By the all over the fields, yeah. Very good. Ah, oh, dear God. I was just uh, getting a few shots of the, of the, sh uh, the, um, the shop fronts over there, Conley Victualers. Here's, uh, oh, here's my Eileen. Oh, yeah. All right. Are you <laughs> Uh, as I said, Rory is telling a few stories here, and uh, he has a whole bundle of them, but it's just a matter of getting them tapped out. Has it, uh -huh. it's, it's like the, the, the Irish soldier and the American and the British soldier were, they were drinking one day, and they were all blowing, blowing their coals, they were so fit. And they were up on top of a skyscraper in London. And, um, uh, Yang said he was so fit he could throw his watch out and run down and catch him before he hit the pavement. Yeah, so he threw good. his watch out and took off, sure you know, toes and bits when he got down, naturally enough. So the British fellow done the same, he said he do it. So Paddy, his was the same. So Paddy took off and halfway down the rope and you called Barry, he said he'd have arrested, he'd win, he'd have a couple of pints of Guinness. So he had a two pints of Guinness, he took off down again, and did you catch us as the British fellow took? I did, of course, he says, and how would you manage that? I put it back an hour before I threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God, why is he? So I tell you, Paddy was fit, all right. Oh, <laughs> he was fit for telling the good one, <laughs> <isn't> he? <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. Well, you hear great stories about Paddy, the Irishman, the Englishman, and the Scotchman. Of course, Paddy always comes out on top. Oh, he's but, uh, Of course, I suppose it's told, but I suppose if the Englishman was telling it, he could have his, uh, huh? he'd have his side coming out on top. So, uh, and the same with the Scotchman, whatever. I never heard about it. Ah, but he, he gets things mixed up at that time, Paddy. I suppose he does. He does. Yeah. He, there was this fella, he was given this beautiful car away, but that had to do three feet to get the car. So, this was an American again and an English fella and an Irish fella. And yet, had to put out a fire that a whole lot of uh, tires in a right fire, and it was quenched that first. And then you had to wrestle a gorilla. And then you wound up, you had to have sex with this lovely blonde. <laughs> so. Oh, sorry, you were to pull the tooth of a gorilla. That was it. Sorry, yeah, I got it yeah. slightly mixed up. But anyway, the Yang started off and he got burned in the fire. That's as far as he got. But the English fella, the gorilla, don't know. That's the first he got. But Paddy came out anyway eventually after being about an hour in with the gorilla. And he says to the fella that was directing the thing, he says, where's this bloody blind now that wants her tooth out? He got it mixed up. He got it mixed up. He got it the gorilla. Jesus Christ. So he doesn't be always right, Paddy. Oh, no, I mean, slightly off. He slips up in that time, doesn't he? He does, he does indeed. He misses out in an hour one. All right, indeed, no doubt. So that's it now. Uh, Rory there, he's uh, he give you a few stories and his life and times and here and uh, the old job here is he give you all his history while ago there and uh, we want to thank Rory for uh, contributing to this uh, bit of a documentary and uh, we look forward to uh, making his acquaintance again.